Victorian train tunnel built in 1897. 2.7 kilometers long, 8.2 meters wide, with perfectly smooth tarmac and a completely consistent gradient along its entire length. It's now a state-of-the-art wind tunnel used by the biggest teams in motorsport, car brands, and crucially, cyclists. This is the Catesby Tunnel. <laughs> An actual tunnel that you can drive or ride your bike through, and one that's said to give better aerodynamic data than a standard wind tunnel. I'm going to tell you all about it and how it works. This facility is absolutely incredible. And I've brought my bike along so that I can ride through it and see what it's all about. But the big question is that what makes this superior over a standard wind tunnel or any other aerodynamic testing method for that matter? Well, the easiest way to answer that is for me to ride through and show you. Riding through here is amazing. It is it's just unlike anything I've ridden before. It's chilly in here, um, but it's just so still. And the road surface is beautiful. It's, it's so smooth. I mean, I'm absolutely flying. <laughs> it's great. Plus, with all the lights on the side, I don't know, you kind of feel like you're... It's like a combination of heading into sort of hyperspace. I don't know, or you feel like you're in Tron or something. It's a bit trippy, but it's... It's proper cool. And the fact that there's no cars down here, oh, I can just crack on. It's great. Well, for some things, a conventional wind tunnel is definitely useful. However, one of the key things that you can't do in a wind tunnel is actually properly ride and put power through the pedals. And when you do that and you get tired and you also are putting force through the bike and having to look where you're going, your position changes. In a wind tunnel, you're just turning your legs over while your bike is held in place via stanchions. You're not putting force through the pedals and you don't need to balance or look forwards. Consequently, while useful, it's not the same as actually riding. You also have no real road surface, meaning you can't calculate how your tyres are performing. This is also a problem in a velodrome. Siberian pine may be very smooth, but it's not tarmac. Other problems in velodromes include that the temperature can change a lot, and you also get a wind swirl effect as you ride round it. You don't get that in here. Similarly, performing aerodynamic testing outdoors is very difficult. It does have the advantage of being in the real world, but the problem is that there's just so many variables. The weather conditions are just constantly changing. The temperature, the wind direction, its speed, and the road surface too has a huge bearing. It's very hard to separate changes in friction of the road surface using devices such as aeropods that you'd attach to the front of your bike. And consequently, it's very hard to get repeat results. And repeatability is one of the cornerstones of science full stop. Overall, when you're testing outside, the resolution of the data tends to be much lower. What does that mean? Well, when you measure anything, resolution is important. So for example, if I give you in the analogy of measuring the width of my tires, it's quite a simple thing to do. But if I were to use a yardstick that had half inch increments along its length, accurately measuring the width of my tires would become very difficult because the resolution of my yardstick is not high enough. Which is where a facility like this comes in. It combines the advantages of being able to actually ride your bike in real life at pace with a much more controlled environment with far fewer variables. So the road surface, completely consistent, and the friction of it is known, meaning you can actually calculate the rolling resistance of your tires too. And the weather conditions in here are remarkably consistent throughout the entire year. 
It ranges from about 9 to 11 degrees C all the time. There's also no rain, no wind, no gusts. Brilliant. And just for further validation, the weather conditions in the tunnel can be accurately measured. You can ride a group of cyclists down this road, being 8.2 meters wide, it's massive. And being able to have a group of cyclists come down here means you can test team time trial tactics, you can test the aerodynamic effects of a peloton and where it's best to sit in a group, or just look at team pursuit aerodynamics. These are things which you cannot do in a wind tunnel. Because of the pressure plate design, you can only have one rider at a time in a wind tunnel. The way you'd measure aerodynamics of a bike and rider and gather data in here is by way of fitting a sensor to the bike. So you'd fit an aeropod sensor to the front of your bike with a pitot tube in it, an accelerometer and various other bits and pieces. This kind of sensor we've shown several times on GCN Tech in the past. It then connects to a speed sensor and a power meter on the bike. And from that, you can work out your aerodynamic drag coefficient. But the key thing is going back to that resolution I spoke about earlier. Because you've limited and controlled so many of the variables in this tunnel, it means that the resolution of the data that you can gather using one of those sensors is far, far higher than what you'd get out on the road. And as a result, you can test smaller and smaller things. So on the road, you may only be able to test big things, such as the difference in a big change in position, or say the difference between a helmet and another helmet. But in here, the engineers tell me you could look at things such as, well, moving your hands from like that to like that, or your elbows from like this to like this and little things like that, as well as equipment changes too. Another interesting challenge with trying to aerodynamically measure things in a tunnel like this is a aerodynamic phenomenon known as aero blockage. So as an object moves through the tunnel, it's, it's pushing air and then that's pushing into the side of the tunnel and out the end of the tunnel. And this needs to be calculated for. It's also dependent on the size of the object and the speed of the object that's moving through the tunnel. However, the engineers at Catesby have actually, well, they've they're good at maths and they've done a lot of maths and they are able to correct any aerodynamic testing that's done in here using maths. Another cool detail for you is that either end of the tunnel, there are these giant turntables. This is one of them. And the idea is that you drive your Formula One car through the tunnel, you get to the end, and then it spins around on this turntable and you can fire off and do another run. Now, you don't need this on a bike. Obviously, you can just spin a bike around quickly, but it does highlight another advantage of the tunnel, which is that you can do lots of runs, one after another, very, very quickly. This is the end of the tunnel, there's the turntable there, and then there, it still is open. You can get through to the other side if you need to, but you'll see there's a weird kind of tunnel within the tunnel. That's quite interesting. So they've actually made a bat conservation area there. It's a, I don't want to say cave, it's a, a house for bats. The reason is, is bats nested and lived in this tunnel and they're endangered. And so in order to get the planning permission to do this, they had to make a, a place for the bats so that it could still live. Now, the other amazing thing just being in here is this is an incredible feat of engineering. The original Victorian structure is, is I'm just in awe of it. So apparently it's 30 million bricks are used to build this and they were all laid by hand back in 1897, which blows my mind. So what are the limitations of a tunnel like this? Well, the big obvious one is you're. You're riding straight on, dead on, in one direction, and you don't get changing angles of wind. So you don't get the wind coming at you from an angle like this. And that's one of the advantages of a conventional wind tunnel because ones that have turntables allow the bike and rider to be twisted relative to the angle of the wind so that you can measure the effects of your and crosswinds. 
One of the things they are thinking and floating the idea of is modifying this facility inside so that it can actually calculate the impact of side gusts by having some fans built into recesses in the side of the tunnel so that you could ride down it and then be hit by a gust and then they could look and measure the effects of that, which would be a pretty cool development that they could do in the future. Another plan they've got in here is to put pressure plates into the floor. And this would allow them to measure the downforce of vehicles traveling over them. Of course, I don't think that's hugely applicable to cyclists. I think I've got plenty of downforce. I don't think I've ever thought, I haven't got enough downforce. But anyway, it's still pretty cool. <laughs> so there you have it, the Catesby Tunnel. What a remarkable idea to transform this Victorian structure into a modern aerodynamics facility. I think it's incredible. And the way that you can then test bikes by actually being able to ride them on a real road surface and get consistent, repeatable results, but potentially also test multiple riders and drafting. For me, that's the most exciting thing. I'd love to come back here in a future video and actually test some drafting and do some real experiments. But I've also been reliably informed that two World Tour teams are going to be coming here and using this facility. They didn't tell me who, so, uh, well, I guess you can comment down below with your guesses as to which two World Tour teams are going to be coming here and testing. But I hope you found this video um, informative and, and interesting. And if you have, you know what to do. Chuck us, chuck us some of these. Let us know your thoughts on it down in the comments section below. And I'll see you in the next one. Love you. Bye.